one of the things that I like about Git, and I think it's one of the things that a lot of people like about Git, is the fact that you can use Git for a pretty long time and only have to deal with the Git porcelain. The commands like git add, git commit, git push, git pull, git fetch. You don't have to deal with the Git plumbing. However, there are times when you're confronted with the Git config. One of those times is when you try and do your first commit after you've just installed Git. For, for example, I've got a repository right here. I've just installed Git. I've just added a couple of files and I want to do a Git commit. And I'll say Git commit dash M, Git config example tutorial. I guess it'll be the commit message. And boom, as I try and do my first commit, I get challenged and it says, hey, uh, the global git config needs your email address and it needs your name. Now, this isn't too difficult to solve. I can just issue the commands that it tells me to issue. I say git config dash dash global user dot email mail at mcnz.com and then git config dash dash global user dot name Cameron. Once that's done, I can just go back to my commit and boom, everything works swimmingly. But, you know, those operations do beg a couple of questions. First of all, if there's a global git config, well, how many different scopes are there? And for that matter, where's all the data about these various different git config objects stored? Hi, I'm Cameron McKenzie. I'm the editor-in-chief at theserverside.com and I have to be one of the world's biggest git advocates and I'm constantly being asked about git config. So I put this quick git config tutorial together just to talk to you about what git config is, some of the properties that can be configured through git config, where the git config files are stored, what those git config files are named, and the various different scopes that are available to you with git config, starting with the system level scope. So the system level scope in git is found under the git installations etc etc folder. Now, in older installations, you would have found it under the ming64, ming32 folder, and newer installations, it's just right under the git installation root etc. Uh, if I scroll in here, you'll see it's right there, git config. Now, notice it's just git config, not dot git config. It's just git config, because there's dot git config in other places. And if I open this up with Notepad, well, you'll see a number of different settings that are in here. You can see the clean and smudge settings that happen uh, as you go back and forth on a push and a pull. Um, looks like it's got uh, a setting that configures whether it rebases or merges on a pull. Some information about credentials as well. And so those are the basic configuration data that's set at the system level in Git. So first off there, we see the Git installations Etsy folder. So what's next after that? Um, the next level of Git configuration would be the user-based configuration. I think this is referred to as the global scope, right? So if I double click on the dot git config file in the, what was the name of that folder? So for me, it is users owner, and it's right in the root of the user owner folder. So basically the, the home folder for the user, it's called dot git config. And you'll remember that when I was told to provide my username and password when I uh, configured Git before I did a commit, um, well, the details of that are stored in the global Git config scope. And you can see that right there. There's the email and there is the name. And now, by the way, I did uh, type in my domain name back, uh, incorrectly. So it's mcnz.com. And I can just edit that file and click save and going forward, Git will just read that information and use those updated values. So that's how easy it is to just go in and update your Git config. You just go in and update those files. Now, you'll also have a Git config file in every repo that you create. So I've got a repository here, a, a local project. Uh, there's a folder called anything there, and there's that .git folder, the hidden .git folder inside that project. If I open up that .git folder, you'll notice that there's a boom config file in there. So I'm gonna open that up with Notepad, and now this has uh, a bunch of information about the configuration of this particular project. As you can see, this 
project pushes and pulls to a remote Git repository hosted over on GitHub, Learn Git Fast. Um, so information about the remote servers and about the branches are in there along with some other core information as well. Now, generally speaking, the those are the um, levels of scope that we really think about when we think about Git config. We usually think about the system scope. We think about the global scope set on the user level. We think about the scope that's local to the Git repository. <laughs> There's actually a couple of other scopes as well. There's work tree. So it is possible to set up separate work trees in your environment. So you actually have folders that um, have the files from different branches in them. I've actually got a, a tutorial over on YouTube about how to set up separate work trees, but that's not commonly done. But if you do that, um, that also, the configuration for the work trees is found in the .git folder of the repository. And it's, the file is named config.worktree. Um, and finally, there's a portable scope as well. I didn't know about this. Um, somebody pointed this out to me. But if you dig into, uh, let's see where I can find this here. There it is, program data and git. Uh, you'll notice that there's a file name uh, config in there. Um, and you can see it's got a little bit of configuration information in that file as well. So just in case you were trying to hunt something down, that is where that data is. Now, by the way, there's a number of different commands that you can use to grab, uh, to find out where git config information is. Um, the best one to use is just git config list show origin. So anytime you open up a git bash shell, let me do that here. You can go and type in git config dash dash list dash dash show dash origin. And you notice that it just ends up listing all of the different pieces of information that's configured inside of Git. And it also shows you the location of the Git config file uh, on your file system. And so you can see here, the core editor has been changed and that's under underscore Git at C git config. Now that's actually an interesting configuration there. And it's actually one I always recommend people to set. Uh, by default, when you install git and you configure, um, when you install git, uh, automatically Vim is configured as the text editor. Anytime you do a, a merge, anytime you uh, have to edit a commit message, anytime even you edit uh, git config, it's actually a VI editor, Vim editor that comes up um, that you have to use. And <laughs> you know it's always difficult to figure out how to exit out of Vim, and a lot of people don't like that particular tool. Um, but people like Notepad++. So one of the things you can do is you can configure Notepad++ to be the default editor. So when there's a merge conflict or you have to update a commit message, um, you just do it in Notepad++, you close the Notepad++ window, um, and then the git commit happens. You don't have to use Vim. Uh, you can also configure the, the tools that can be used to compare files when there's a merge conflict. That's another thing you can set up in git config. So those are some very, very powerful tools in there. Um, and you can see there's a lot of config going on here. But again, that's a great command to use, git config dash dash list dash dash show origin. Now, that is all the git configuration on my local Windows file system. Uh, if you're using Ubuntu, you might be interested in where all the git configuration is for Ubuntu. And that is next. Now, if you're working on Linux, There's a cool little command I saw on Stack Overflow. And it's this command here. And you can configure this command. I'll start off with local. And you can see it tells you the location of your config file. That is local. There's global. and there is system. Now this particular repository hasn't had the local workspace file configured, so that one doesn't exist. And to be honest with you, I'm not sure where that portable scope exists on Ubuntu Linux. So again, 
let me know in the comments if you know of any scopes here and how they apply. And there you go. That's everything you ever wanted to know about Git config, where those Git config files are located, what the different Git config scopes are, and the different things that you can do with Git config. Now, by the way, if you enjoyed that tutorial, why don't you head over to the serverside.com. I'm the editor in chief over there. We've got lots of great tutorials on Git, on GitHub, on DevOps tools, Java, Mojo, Python, Agile, Scrum. In fact, uh, I just recently published a two hour long tutorial on how to use Git and GitHub. There's also one on Git and Bitbucket and also one on Git and GitLab. So uh, if you're interested in learning more about those tools, please check those out. If you're interested in my personal antics, you can always follow me on Twitter. And I'd love it if you shared this video and tweeted at me on X. My handle is at Cameron MCNZ. I do have a newsletter about the latest things that are happening in the world of software development with a big focus on artificial intelligence and machine learning, especially around the new Mojo programming language that's poised to replace Python. So if you're interested in any of that, please sign up for my newsletter. And we've also got a Discord group on how to learn to program in Mojo. So check that out as well. The links are in the description. And of course, if you're watching this on YouTube, well, why don't you subscribe on the YouTube?